glass blowing has been around since the height of the Roman Empire. It was around that time when people discovered that molten glass could be inflated by blowing into a hollow tube and shaped by the human touch. There are many different techniques that glass blowers use to form vessels and decorative pieces, but for 2,000 years, the base techniques have remained relatively unchanged. It all begins with glass that is melted in a furnace at over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass emerges as a pliable gob dangling precariously from the end of a scalding hot blowpipe. Susie Perret of Ventura Hot Glass talks to us about this art form that's become her life's work and passion. I, for one, don't like to carry on a big conversation while I'm working because I have to count. I have to know what's going on. Seconds make a difference and it's so dynamic that I have to have almost pure concentration. We have a thing in glass blowing and we say don't take your eyes off the glass ever. So that's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about that glass. We're thinking about what's it going to do next? How is it going to come off the pipe? You know, how is it going to burn us? How is it responding to the shape and the design and everything else? I think it's almost a poetic expression in uh, our glass. Instead of words, it's a feeling. But we're telling the story around the piece with our design. And a lot of it has the metallics and the colors um, tend to line up and have a feeling of Gustav Klimt. So it's that flavor, it's that poetic story. I say all of Midsummer Night's Dream is in our work because we do work abstract, then the viewer is allowed to participate in uh, the imagery as well, trying to discover what he or she thinks of it too, and uh, allows that story to continue around the piece, but also to stay alive without quite putting your finger on it. So if we do that, then we've done a good job.